cool. Yeah. Why are you licking me right now? Which one is that? It's the Anubis. She's weird. Why are you licking me? I don't like that. Hey, it's Megan. And Sue in the restrictive section. And today we are going to do a December wrap up. Yes. Yes. Um, which is going to go a lot better for Sue than it is for me. <laughs> And while we do it, we are going to drink this Sam Adams winter lager because it's cold as bench tits outside. It's cold outside. It's oh, like, it's cold. Is it less than 10 degrees? It's less than 10 degrees out. It's fucking cold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So let's try it. Let's, it's warm and festive. Let's give it a go. Mm, I like it. it. Yeah, it's got some spice it's to a, it. Yeah, it says it has... Orange peel, cinnamon, and ginger. Hmm. I can taste it's the ginger. It's pretty good. Sure, yeah. I mean, it's like pretty light and. It's a good, yeah, like, like, it's light but hearty. It's a good winter drinking beer. Yeah. I like it. It's, it is a little, like, spicy, like, orange spice. Hmm. I kind of dig it. Yeah, I'm into it. All right. So, um, why don't you go ahead and go first there? <laughs> yeah. I finished four books this month, which is pretty good for me lately. <laughs> Um, and <coughs> the first book I finished was The God of Small Things by Arundhati Roy, and was this translated? I believe it was. Uh, I could be wrong. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's not. I think it's I thought not. it was. Um, but this is, um, set in India and follows mainly the, this, um, young woman who is kind of coming back and like recounting mm -hmm. what happened with her family. I don't know. It's a very strange book, kind of. It is kind, kind of, of strange. I mean, it's kind of a family saga, um, and this family is super fucked up. Um, and she has a twin brother, and he is mute now. He wasn't as a child. It flashbacks to like their childhood to present time. And, um, I, I don't know how I feel about it, honestly. Still, I don't. I think I gave it three stars, and I thought it was, like, really beautifully written. And I can understand why it's become kind of a modern classic, um, but I don't know if I liked it. <laughs> I'm not sh I just, I really don't know. Because it, it wasn't something I was feeling, like, compelled to pick up. Like, it took me a long time to read it. Um, until like the very end and then I was into it, but then something real weird <laughs> happens and I was like what? 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 Why? What? Why? Um, so yeah, I just don't know how I felt about it. I DNF'd it because I was like, I was having a hard time. I've been in a reading slump and so I just couldn't get into it yeah. and I just didn't finish it. Yeah, it was hard to get into, but it wasn't, it wasn't bad, though, is the thing. It was like, it was really well written. When I was reading it, I wasn't disliking it, and I would read, like, a fairly large chunk at a time, but I just wasn't feeling, like, compelled to pick it up. And yeah. I feel like that might have been partly because I was in a little bit of a slump, too, because I had the same issue with the second book I read this month, even though I really enjoyed it as well. But, yeah, that's kind of my feelings on that, was kind of like, uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But I really don't know. <laughs> you may as well go again. All right. The second book I <laughs> second book I read was Sea Biscuit by Laura Hillenbrand, which is of course the story of the legendary horse Sea Biscuit. Sea Biscuit. Um, which was back in like the 30s, the 1930s. He was kind of a sensation because he was an underdog. Nobody thought he was gonna amount to anything and then he was like the greatest racehorse of all time <laughs> so he showed them yeah and I really enjoyed this I knew Jack about racehorsing or I know race fuck horsing, all about racehorsing horse, horse racing, racing. Um, I knew nothing about horse racing and I didn't give a shit about horse racing before reading this but I found it really interesting I learned a lot about the sport and I thought his story was really um, Heartwarming, I guess. Yeah. Although I will say that um, I, I sometimes question whether, because like in the in the book, they're like, "Oh, Seabiscuit just you know he wanted to race and he loved to race," and I'm like, "Did, did he really?" Or I did don't. He, 
What do you rather have just been, you know, a horse. doing horse stuff? See, I kind of feel like horses probably don't really want to race. Like, I think horses probably just yeah. want to roam about Just want to be horses. Yeah. So, yeah, I was kind of like, I don't know if I buy that necessarily. Um, but, yeah, it was a really good book, and it was really well written. Like, I... Reading the ra reading about the races gave me like I felt like I was actually watching it and was like really anxious. It gave like, me like the adrenaline. Oh god! Oh god! So, yeah. And so, one of my favorite things is names of racehorses. I love the names <laughs> of racehorses. We were and talking about this the other day, and I think that I'm going to start naming dogs like they name yeah racehorses. Yeah, they kind of do that with like purebred dogs, I think. Really? Because they have to name them in the family. Huh. So like my sister has a purebred uh, Bouvier, which always makes me want to do from The Simpsons, Mrs. Bouvier. <laughs> <laughs> but she has a purebred Bouvier, and the thing with its like family is that they're named after designers, hmm. and so her dog's name is Armani, hmm. and then... Uh, I don't know what the other dogs' names are in this family. Mm -hmm. Louboutin. I don't Gucci. know. <laughs> I don't yeah, know, but that's like a thing with dogs too. I didn't know that. Hmm. Yeah, but I like how racehorses sometimes just have like phrases as their names. I know. That's why I start <laughs> naming dogs like yeah. Man of War. That was a horse in here. Man, Man of War. Man of War. Was, and yeah. War Admiral. And like, I don't remember what else there was. But, yeah, racehorse names are great. Yeah, I'm just going to start naming dogs like that. So, I only read two books this month. I have been in a horrible slump. And so the first book that I finished was Winter's Bone by Daniel Woodrell. And I read this for the Read Harder Challenge, which I did not complete, <laughs> um, for a book that's set within 100 miles of your location. Um, I really liked this, but it was really sad. And it's sad that, like, the region that we live in is known for this kind of shit. Yeah. But so True. really fucked up stuff happened in this book. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it was handled like it wasn't fucked up. Like, I feel like it was handled like, this is just normal. And I'm sure that for these characters, it was normal. And that added to, like, the sadness of it. Mm -hmm. But, like, some real fucked up shit happened in here. Yeah. But I really yeah, liked it's it. pretty sad. I thought it was really well written. Um, and it's more, the book is, like, more harrowing and more sad than the movie, I think. Really? The movie, the movie sugar, kind of sugarcoats some things, I think. Hmm. Yeah, the book's a little bit more... It's pretty brutal. Yeah. But, I mean, I, I did enjoy it. I think it was really well written. Yeah. And I think that, you know, it's a an interesting look at, like, some people's actual lives. Because I know that, I know that people live like that. Yeah. So, Yeah. And the next book I read, I actually read for the same challenge of reading a book set within 100 miles nice. of your location. And that was The Shepherd of the Hills by Harold Bell Wright, which is a classic of the Ozarks. Um, there's like a whole thing in Branson. There's like a play that they put on of The Shepherd of the Hills mm -hmm. that's like a staple of the area. There was, they were, it was shutting down what last year and people like made a big ruckus about it to do and they brought it back <laughs> but um yeah this is about a man older man from from the city who comes to live in the ozark mountains like out in the woods and um befriends the people there and uh it was a, I, I liked this a lot more than I was expecting to. Hmm. Um, I thought it was just going to be a boring story about him, like, you know, finding God or something in right. the Ozark Mountains. Um, and it wasn't. There was, like, mystery and intrigue oh. and, like, maybe ghosts? Oh. Maybe not. I don't know. I'm not, I, I think there wasn't ghosts, but they thought there were. <laughs> but yeah it was really it was a pretty interesting read and um I was also a little surprised by how well women were represented or I mean there's one prominent female character and I was expecting it to be pretty sexist because it yeah. was published in 1907 and like 
in this the area is in, you know especially progressive um but the the female character was actually um really intelligent and um yeah that was kind of hmm. refreshing but also nice. there was i don't know there was like conflicting things about like womanhood and manhood at times i felt because like uh, the way they, the author wrote, um, about, like, you know, what makes a man, I almost seemed was, like, felt was, like, more archaic <laughs> than the way he represented women, um, because it was very much, like, men are supposed to be big and strong, and it's, you know, desirable right. to be a big, strong man, and not, because there's, like, a character who is, like, small and... Um, he's going to go live in the city, and he's, like, you know, clearly very undesirable. Mm -hmm. And, like, and then there's a character who's, like, like one the, Big big, early the biggest guy in the area and can kick anyone's ass, and he's, like, the desirable one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and then there was, there was, like, one scene that was really kind of disgusting because... <laughs> Um, there's also another character who's, like, a big, strong guy, but he's an asshole. Oh. And he, like, harasses the female character, Sammy. And, um, at one point, he's, like, harassing her and this, like, the little small guy who she was, like, supposed to marry. And even though she hates this big, burly dude, and, like, sh this guy harasses her and makes her feel uncomfortable... She's, like, titillated by how strong and manly Ew. he's being. And I'm like, ugh. Gross. So that scene was, like, really kind of, like, disgusted me. But, um, overall, <laughs> overall, I wasn't completely disgusted by the way women and men were portrayed. Because, like, I don't know, even in the end it kind of, like, um, comes around and says that, like, Maybe it wasn't so much that this guy was, like, small that made him undesirable, but more that he was, like, a pushover. Okay. So, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I, I gave it 3.25 stars <laughs> because, like, I did like it a lot more than I was expecting, and I thought it was a pretty good book. That's fair. Um, the last book that I read this month, the second and last, is a graphic novel, um, and it is Regression by Cullen Bunn, Danny Luckert, and Marie Inger. It's a horror comic. Um, I really liked this. This is really fucked up, y'all. But it was really good. It's about this guy who is having these, like, really weird, like, nightmares and, like, flashbacks. And so his friend hooks him up with a hypnotist to do, like, regression therapy. And he starts to see these things that are maybe from a past life and maybe aren't and then I'm not gonna ruin the ending but is this him like in entrails yeah the there's cover? a lot of entrails on the cover <laughs> um, and then like the artwork I'm trying to find a good example because the artwork is really good but it's really fucked up um, yeah there's just like a lot of I wonder if I can find it toward the end Yeah, where's that like? Here we go. So it's really cool, but it's really fucked up. Like, I'm not sure how well you can see this, but there's like an orgy going on on top of this monster. <laughs> so like... Oh, yeah. And then there's sure like is. zombie looking motherfuckers down <laughs> here at the bottom. And then there's this bitch who's like, yes, please, let all of this happen. <sighs> So it's, I mean, it's really good. Here's some more fucked up artwork. I thought it was super good. Um, I'm ready to read more of it because this is just volume one. So I'm hoping there's a volume two and I would love to read it. All right. So the last book that I read this month, I finished this morning. <laughs> <laughs> We're filming this on December 31st. So uh, happy new year. Yeah. It'll probably be out like. A week after that. So, <laughs> way happy, way past Oops. Happy New Year. <laughs> but, um, I read Fever Dream by Samantha Schweblin, and this was translated, uh, by Megan McDowell, and, um, I, I was looking for something because I had one challenge left for the Read Harder Challenge, and that was to read a book, um, 
set in Central or South America by a Central or South American author. And that the book I had planned to read, I was like, I can't read that quickly because um, even though it was a pretty short book, all the reviews I'd seen said it was like really slow. So I was looking for something short and fast paced <laughs> that I could read. And I found this, which I'm sure a lot of you have heard of because it was, I think, I think it was shortlisted for the Man Booker Prize this year. Um, but the author is Argentinian and it never really says exactly where it's set. Um, but based on like context clues and things, I'm like pretty sure it's set in South America mm -hmm. somewhere, probably Argentina. Um, but this is a real trippy, like fucking weird book <laughs> um about it's like this woman and she's in the hospital and she's talking to this boy who's sitting by her bed and recounting what has happened to get her there and um it has to do with like this hmm. contaminated water and it, it's i still i don't know what the fuck was going like <laughs> I don't know what what happened in this book really like it's weird and like it's just there's no unless I just didn't understand it I don't think there's any like real conclusion that tells you like this is what was happening <laughs> <laughs> that's um, real fucked up yeah but I did really enjoy it <laughs> like I enjoyed reading it so I gave it three and a half stars, but like I don't I don't know what the fuck was going on. <laughs> there's like talk of these worms, but I don't think there's actually worms. It's just like a feeling. It feels like worms, mm -hmm. and you yeah, it's it's weird. It's a weird. It's really weird. It's like a weird book. But I liked it. <laughs> yeah, and, so and it helped that. me finish my read harder challenge. There in you time, go. So yeah. That was it. There it is. <laughs> so that was our reading month. December wrap up, yeah. And uh, this beer, I like it. It's like pretty it's good. pretty good. It's yeah. it's kind of subtle and light and tasty. It's pretty tasty. Yeah, I, I dig it. Yeah. So let us know how your December reading went. Yes, and let us know if you've read anything that we talked about in this video and what you thought of it. Yeah. Um, and as usual, there'll be some links down below where you can find us elsewhere on social media. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.